This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. For its Capstone Agents of Change project, Girl Scout Troop 149 in St. Louis County decided to raise money for the humanitarian nonprofit Palestine Children's Relief Fund. Here's Troop co leader Nawal Abu Hamda. When we talked to the girls about what they wanted to do, they said that they wanted to earn money to support the people in Gaza who were suffering. And when I asked them how, they said they wanted to make bracelets. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make friendship bracelets. I mean, they're 10 years old, 10 and 11. Um, So that was the first thing they, they thought of to do. Around the same time, the troop needed to decide whether it would participate in Girl Scout cookie sale season. Nawal's daughter, sixth grader Maria Abdul Basit, wasn't feeling up for it. It didn't feel right to like be happy and be like, Girl Scout cookies, Girl Scout cookies. And we thought that it was uncomfortable to sell cookies when there's something really bad happening in Gaza. And um, we just decided to do that for Gaza to make us feel more comfortable. Nawal felt the same, though it was difficult for her to hear that sentiment. And that's so sad to me that kids don't, they feel guilty to be happy. But that's just the gist of it, right? Like, it's real life. We were mourning and we were grieving. We almost (laughs) always looked forward to Girl Scout cookie season because we had so much fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were always... Right, Maddie? We would always, like, scream, Girl Scout cookies, come get your Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. And that felt so um, hard for us to do right now. As the Troops Agents of Change project gained momentum, Nawal received an email from Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri. The organization told her to stop the fundraising campaign and take down their social media posts, or they would face legal action. I got the email saying that as Girl Scouts... We do not participate in political partisan activities. That was in the first paragraph. And that alone was alarming because this was not political nor partisan. This was just about helping kids in need, helping kids who are suffering. That's all it was. There's nothing political about it. It's only human. Mm-hmm. And then the, the la- I still remember the last paragraph of that first email where it said it needed to remain neutral and um, need to be inclusive to all, uh, all kids in our group or all kids and members in our group or in our organization. And I didn't understand what that meant either because what uh, difference would Gaza kids be than any other kids here in America or anywhere else? So what did that mean that we needed to be inclusive to all of our members? Who would be offended about... Um, raising money for children. Mm-hmm. I, that didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And before I could process that first email, another one came and another and another. So four emails before I could even process and respond to the first one. So I was feeling maybe at first um, confused, trying to understand why they would deem this as political and partisan. And then it turned into, okay, well, I, am I being reprimanded? You're demanding that I remove the post? You are you don't want Girl Scouts at all to be associated with helping children in Gaza at all? You know, I felt offended at that, at that point. Nawal Abu Hamda responded to the Girl Scouts, expressing her disappointment and hurt. I wanted to first tell them why this meant so much to our troop. Um, I wanted to uh, reiterate maybe some something they've heard as well about why there was a dire need, how Gaza was deemed the most inhabitable and and the most unsafe place for children right now. And I, I felt like um, I also had to highlight how we were um, inspired by uh, their posts as well as other troops and them highlighting other troops for raising money for war victims in re- Ukraine. Um, And I I had to cite a few of those sources. One in particular um, 
where a troop was highlighted in, in their national newsletter about it. Nawal and her troop's co-leader, Fazila Bobat, along with the parents of the six other troopers, made the decision to disband Troop 149 from Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri. It was not just, just Nawal and I, it was all the other girls and moms who were, like, you know, they agreed, like, they're like, yeah, it, we don't, like, feel that, we don't feel like we need, we ha- we can be part of this com- uh, organization that doesn't believe in helping other kids or helping other people in need. If you've just tuned in, we're discussing what happened with a Girl Scout troop in St. Louis County that made bracelets to raise funds for child war victims in Gaza. Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri told them to stop or face legal action. Yesterday afternoon, minutes after I spoke with Fazila, Nawal, and Nawal's daughter Maria about their story, Girl Scouts of the USA issued an apology for what has happened with the girls and their troop. We are disappointed and disheartened by what recently transpired, said the chief executive officer for Girl Scouts of the USA. We will be working alongside our council partners to review this incident and make necessary adjustments to prevent it from happening in the future. We realize we missed an opportunity to champion our troops while they make a difference. The CEO added that the national organization had not approved the language in an email sent by the Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri that threatened legal action against the St. Louis Troop. The apology was made in response to a letter sent by the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, which asked for an internal investigation of the incident. This morning, I had the chance to reconnect with Nawal about this latest news. She told me she received word of it from CARE rather than direct contact from Girl Scouts of the USA or the Eastern Missouri Council of Girl Scouts. She said it was the response that she and other former Troop 149 moms wanted. Although the words apology wasn't used in the statement or the the response, um, A group of us moms, we did come together on a call yesterday to discuss the statement and to reflect and understand if if this would suffice. And we all agreed that although it wasn't a formal apology and it wasn't directed towards us, um, it is a great first step in the right direction. And we do accept and appreciate and respect it. Um, We acknowledge that uh, or we appreciate that they acknowledge that there was harm done and that there was injustice done. Um, but to us, the real victims here of injustice are those who we, who we were raising the money for, and that's the children in Gaza. Were you with Maria when you received uh, news that the apology had been issued from the national level? Um, and you know how is it that how is it that you will talk with Maria and the rest of the the girls who are part of the the former Troop One Forty Nine and now you know like the the to be named independent group? Yeah, Maria was with me when I when I was notified about it, and also the other moms talked to the girls about it. And interestingly. They accepted the apology right away, but they still felt very hurt and unheard. And they still, um, the way they put it was, uh, we still want to know how this fundraiser was different and treated differently than the one in Ukraine. That's the girls. That's what they're asking. And they feel like their questions and their concerns were still not heard and answered. We also received a response this morning from the Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri. Earlier this week, we asked them to explain what, exactly, led to the email and legal threat. In its statement, the group said, We strongly support any of our scouts who are standing up for what they believe in. The statement continued, however, to say that troops must follow a notice and approval process before fundraisers are started in the name of Girl Scouts. Quote, that is why, when other concerned members of our scouting family and St. Louis community brought Noel's activities to our attention, we reached out to her and attempted to work with her through our approval process. The Girl Scout statement concluded by saying our goal was always to find a way to work with Noel and her scouts and stay within our fundraising rules, unquote. 
At this point, the former Troop 149 is formally disbanded from Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri. When I spoke with Nawa Abu Hamda and her daughter Maria yesterday, they shared that the group is staying together as an independent cohort. Uh, we're going to continue to be a group. We're, we're a sisterhood, you know. The girls feel very close to one another, and we don't feel as if Girl Scouts defines us. Uh, we all share common values, um, and we are a group that we're going to continue to do amazing things in our communities um, and participate in not only activities that build our skills and teach us new skills, but also to help the world Mm -hmm. be a better place. Yeah. Maria, is there something that you hope you'll be able to do with your troop now? Maybe, like, we would have more freedom to do more things. What are some of the things that you would like to continue to do, even if you are not part of of Girl Scouts? Maybe still get badges, because it's kind of fun getting badges. (laughs) Do you think you would ever maybe rejoin Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri, you know, if, if things change? Um... I don't really know because I feel like it would be much more better to just be a group itself uh, instead of joining Girl Scouts again. Mm-hmm. Now, Noel, the bracelet fundraiser to raise funds for the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, it was paused temporarily and it is back now. It so <laughs> how many bracelets have you sold so far? Um, And how long will you maintain the campaign? Sure. I'm a little bit scared to say the number with Fazila on the call. (laughs) (laughs) Because the first time around, uh, all the moms said, okay, Noah, because I thought, man, the more bracelets that we sell, the more money we could raise, right, for the PCRF, for the children. Um, And so they they really uh, asked me to stop sales that first time around. And so I'm so grateful that I I did ask them, like people are asking, they want it, let's open up sales. And they said, you know, we'll figure out, we'll figure out how to get them out, just start up the sales. So now the last time I looked, we were almost at a thousand and it's only been open for two days. Oh, her mouth. Oh, wow. Yes. (laughs) Maria, you've got some work ahead of you. (laughs) We're almost at a thousand now. And, um. And so that's just in the last two days that we've opened sales. Um, so it's just remarkable. It's it's heartwarming to know that, you know, the month that we were going back and forth uh, emailing Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri, we felt alone, or at least I did, you know, and not alone in the sense of I had uh, like Fazila and the other troop moms um, as my rock, honestly, and huge support system. But what I was saying was sometimes you feel like you're screaming with your mouth wide open, but nothing's coming out. You mm-hmm. know, is anybody, are, are all any of these, like Fazila said, leaders or big organizations, are, can they see what's happening, you know? And um, so, yeah, we're just, I'm, I'm really, um, it gives me hope. Mm-hmm. We've been also getting a lot of donations Oh, have you? Where have they come from? Um, people um, that wanted to donate to the troop itself for activities. Mm-hmm. And some didn't some people donate to Gaza too? Yeah, we kept a, an option to specifically donate to the PCRF. And the reason we put that in there is we want the girls to see how much money that they raised for um, the children. I want them to know that they make a difference and they can make a difference. Mm-hmm. And Fazila, this experience, I mean, what has it taught you, whether it's about the troop, about your community, um, you know, about being affiliated with a larger organization? What have you learned? A resilience. I, I look up to Nawal, especially, who is so courageous. And, you know, she stands up for what she believes in. She is, uh, you know, optimal of being a leader, what, it's supposed, what a leader should look like. Um, you know, 
because we've lost faith in our own leaders trying to stop or the genocide or, you know, demand a ceasefire. So it's up to us. It's the least we can do. You know, we we are in support with Nawal. She's like the, you know, I feel like she's the main drive for us. Thank you, Fazila. Okay. <laughs> it's so sweet. <laughs> So, so I feel you know we it's the least we can do. It's like it's up to us to bring change. You know, not just it's not just in Palestine, but children in other countries who are facing injustice, who are facing oppression. Mm-hmm. So it, it so it has taught us a lot. Noma, what do you take away from this entire experience, especially as someone who grew up here in Eastern Missouri? That's. That's a really tough question. It's really loaded because there's so much I can say that I take away. Um, I think from the very beginning, and Fazila knows this, is it was a very emotional uh, period for me because it triggered a lot of thoughts and emotions that I felt when I was growing up here. And those thoughts um, included, you know, being silenced and suppressed for being a Palestinian or saying that I was Palestinian or saying the word Palestinian or Palestine. You know, I was it was a taboo thing to talk about. It was a it was something that I wasn't able to um express. It it even led me to begin um telling people when they asked me where I was originally from to say Jerusalem because it felt more it was more comfortable for them, you know? And so this not only taught me resilience, as uh, Fazila has mentioned, but also how important it is to stand up for what's right. And if you feel like you are being, um, uh, there was unjust done to you, that you should speak up and use your voice and you don't know how, um, what impact you can make for others when you do. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be the main thing that I would take from this. Um, and I think it's important for organizations like Girl Scouts or any other, especially those who um, say that they, sh- they they have certain values that that um, go hand in hand with what's do- for doing what's right and being on the right side of history and and um, they have they have a duty. Right. They have a duty um, if they're going to talk about making the world a better place, then they have a duty to speak upon upon it as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask the last question of you, Maria. So the Girl Scout law, Mm -hmm. do you know the Girl Scout law? No. No? Okay. That's okay. This is why we're doing it this (laughs) way. So the Girl Scout law says, I will do my best to be honest and fair friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do. Does that sound like something that that you believe in? Yeah. Yeah. And the second part of it is, and to, I will do my best to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Do you think that these are things that you want to continue to do with your new troop? Yes. Mm -hmm. Which parts? All of it. Yeah. Like, I think that's very important to do in, like, anywhere, anywhere, in any group. That was my conversation with sixth grader Maria Abdul Basit, her mom Nawal Abu Hamda, and Fazila Bobot. Nawal and Fazila, both of St. Louis County, are the former co leaders of Maria's Girl Scout troop. The cohort plans to continue their work independent of the Girl Scouts of Eastern Missouri in response to the regional organization's threat of legal action if the troop continued as Girl Scouts to raise money to help children in Gaza. Since their story made national headlines, the troop has raised $10,000 for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. This episode was produced by Emily Woodbury. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. 
St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis on the Air proudly supports local artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.